Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to Caring Medical Florida here in Southwest Florida, Fort Myers actually. And I'm here with actually a dear friend. Basically, we've known each other for 30 years because you know you were friends with my spiritual mentor, uh, Pastor Peter Blakemore, who, as we both know, unfortunately uh, died at a young age, at the age of 42 in 1995. So he was a, you know, my spiritual mentor, Mine and obviously, too. obviously a dear friend of yours. And then uh, we got acquainted through some special circumstances. Uh, you know, 12 years ago, and then, uh, you know, <laughs> Mary and then we were talking after we met you, and then we're like, man, if we could get Rob to work at Caring Medical, man, what a blessing that would be. So why don't you just explain, uh, you know, what you do at Caring Medical, and then obviously you've been there many years, and then we are going to talk about your humongous styloids here. So it's gonna be a really, <laughs> really interesting video because we're gonna explain how even, uh, even somebody who has minimal or no symptoms, how the diagnostic procedures we do actually could benefit them because we can prevent future illnesses or ailments. So we're gonna look at your neck vitals that we did, but sure. What, what's your job at Caring Medical? And Well, you've had several jobs. I've had several jobs and different job titles, but I think the best one, the most descriptive one, is the one you gave me. It said, Director of First Impressions. And so for many people, I'm the first person they encounter either by phone or by email. And usually uh, it's something like, uh, I saw Dr. Hauser's video and I have all of those things. Tell me how I can be a, become a patient. So I talk to people on the phone. I communicate by email. I tell them how prolotherapy works and how we can hopefully help them. So uh, it's, a, it's a very rewarding because I talk to 30 or 40 people a day at least, who, and they're hurting people. They're, they've got chronic pain. And unfortunately, the, they've been let down by uh, the medical profession. They've been given pain pills or things that treat the symptoms of their, of their illness, and nobody has been able to find the cause. And uh, they're so overjoyed to find us, and they want somebody to explain how we can help them succinctly, and that's my job. No, and you do it, you do it great. I've often said, you know, there's a, in the Bible it says, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And part of that is none of us likes to call a place and we get a, you know, we get a voicemail or we don't get to talk to a human being. So, you know, the way Caring Medical set up is we got several people answering the phones. So you actually get to talk to a live person because that's what we all want. And then, you know, obviously at some points, you know, you follow me around. So, you know, you were, you know, just to see, you know, see what's going on in the sure. clinic. So what, what kind of things, well, you've actually been following me around almost for a week now. So what, how's, how's your week been? Oh, it's been wonderful. I mean, I can, you know, having worked here for a decade or more, I have seen so many success stories and experience them myself, but to, uh, especially with the neck patients who are, have a lot of symptoms, to see how you go through the uh, process of diagnosing and uh, determining a treatment and walking them through, they're so patient and uh, I just, it, you know, it's, it's rewarding to see that and it's, double rewarding because I'll be able to do a better job with the next person I, I share this information with. You know, I think maybe one of the aha moments for you this week was when we saw Hattie, you know, who was 16, an honor student at, a, uh, and then she gave us permission to use her name, uh, uh, you know, 16-year-old six, honor student, and then her mother explained to us that because of her neck instability and the breakdown of her neck curve, that she went down to reading at a third grade level. Tragic. But it just shows you how quickly the brain, like, you know, we the brain's resilient, but the brain can only withstand so much pressure. And all that happened to Hattie, and you, you heard it, was all it was was somebody threw a basketball to her and hit her in the head, 
and then she, you know she got a whiplash and then the whiplash led to you know the cervical destructure and her brain pressure went so high and she's a, even even after a couple of visits she's looking a lot better thinking a lot oh, yeah. better oh yeah but anything else stick out in the week you know of observing well yes um, not every neck patient needs prolotherapy or needs prolotherapy right from the start yeah. if their curve can be corrected and uh, repaired then either they may not need prolotherapy mm -hmm. or the prolotherapy will be even more effective and that was an eye-opener for me because mm -hmm. you know people think well I'm going to get prolotherapy but really if their curve is a problem yeah. then we can work on that and that is that is probably a lot easier to to resolve than, mm -hmm. than actually the work of prolotherapy. And then you and I, that's exactly right, and then you and I said there's generally four structural things that cause the problems that people see us for. And you know, the common symptoms that we see are dizziness, vertigo, ringing of the ear, ear fullness, sound sensitivity, light sensitivity, mm -hmm. swallowing difficulties, digestive problems, seizure disorder, migraine headaches, tension headaches, head fullness, brain fog, personality problems. So the four things which we talked about multiple times during this week was cervical destructure or breakdown of the cervical curve, uh, cervical instability, elongated styloids, which we have to talk about, and then uh, misalignments, you know, like misalignments of, of the vertebrae. And you saw, we saw some interesting cases, like we saw the one patient said that the ringing of their ear, the tinnitus got so much worse in uh, the, like when they turned to the left, the right ear got really bad tinnitus. Then mm -hmm. if they went over here, they got really bad tinnitus then. And then if they stimulated their face in a certain way, then the tinnitus got really worse. It just shows you that when you get cervical destruction or cervical instability that the neurology, the wires, if you will, they just get all screwed up and you get all these weird symptoms. So many patients, I ask them if they have any of these symptoms, you know, and I go through the laundry list that okay. you just went through and in so many cases they say, yeah, all of them, all of them. Okay. And I'm sure they appreciate that, you know, it's, these are things that we commonly see here and are successful at treating them. Now let's talk about, Rob, what symptoms do you have? Well, uh, I'm happy to say I don't have any symptoms. Yeah. And you have never had prolotherapy on your neck, correct? That is correct. So, you know, and one might say, like, why go through the whole neck vital thing for you? But part of it is, like, you actually take care of your health, like you want to live a long life. Like, how old are you now? I'll be 75 in uh, 47 days. Okay, and then anybody who looks at you say, man, you look spectacular, like. Well, most people, well, nobody guesses my age. and Yeah. But it's it's something you have to work at. It's a, it's a gift, but yeah. you gotta take care of that gift. Yeah, and you and I were talking about like when we saw this, it's like you have no symptoms. So part of what, why I wanted us to do a video was just because you have certain abnormalities, so you have an 80 millimeter styloid, right? You have an 80 millimeter styloid, and it's on your left side. You know, so you have a littler one, this is the literal one on the right, but you can see the really big one. Your styloid goes all the way to C3. You would wanna know, one, that you have that, and is it causing any problems? Right. So. You did neck vital, so what we found was, and this is the sheet that we gave you, we found one is your eye pressures are totally normal, 12 and 13. Your pupil size is totally normal. So from an eye standpoint, uh, doing very well, except that on the left side, remember I showed you on the left mm -hmm. side, your optic nerve sheath right here, your optic nerve sheath, on the left side was 9.1 and on the right side was 6.8. So in other words, that's the first sign that there's something that's on your left side that's not on your right side that may not be causing a problem now, but it might cause a problem in the future. So right now, your left optic nerve has more fluid around it than the right one. So some people who have that, you know, they get blurry vision or double vision. 
Now that's not happening to you, but you can understand why that could happen because if you have more pressure on your left eye nerve, which is the cable system that takes what you're seeing to the left side of your brain, if the nerve impulses are slower on the left side because of all the pressure, then on the right side, that's where you might get two images or double vision or... And then that's also a sign that the pressure on the left side of your brain is likely higher than the right side. Now you might say, right, like why don't I have any symptoms? Right, why don't I? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so when you lay down, your right jugular vein, see how it says 159? Mm -hmm. And the left side it says 48. So in other words, your cross-sectional area of your jugular vein on the right side is 160 millimeters squared, meaning it's 16 millimeters by like 10 millimeters. So in other words, the right jugular vein is pretty much completely open and the left one isn't so open. And then see right here where it says 89 and 19. Mm -hmm. So that's at C1. So your right jugular vein right here is totally open, 159, and then here it's 89. So it's partially closed on the right and you might say, well, what's causing that? Remember when we, when we showed your digital motion x-ray, you do have a cervical curve, but the atlas was still too far forward. Like you do have a lordotic curve and you have almost no instability. So thus, you know, no instability, you have like almost no, well, you have no symptoms basically. So in other words, the atlas being a little bit forward is narrowing your jugular vein from 159 to 89. So at C1, it's like nine millimeters by 10 millimeters. And we often say in the office here, as long as it's over 50 millimeters squared, seven millimeters by seven millimeters. So basically when you're laying down at night, your right jugular vein is open enough that it's lowering the pressure enough, even though you have this big styloid compressing your left side, that you're basically asymptomatic, right? So you can understand that if you get into a little bit of an accident and you got a little bit of upper cervical instability, then all of a sudden, you know, your atlas, say, rotated to the right and it started obstructing the right, then you might all of a sudden say, oh my gosh, I got like head pressure, I got headaches, I never get headaches. I know who to call. Yeah, yeah. But no, but people at home just thinking about like, geez, they're in a little fender bender or they hit their head on a cabinet just a little bit. And it's like, how could I get all these symptoms from this? You would be somebody who might, that might happen. So at C1, the right jugular vein is 89 and the left one's 19. So meaning that when you lay down at night, you know, it really, the right jugular vein is you know, six times more open than the left jugular vein. So this is compressing somewhat your jugular vein. It's just you're so right jugular vein dominant that it, the right jugular vein is protecting you. And then we found that if you just rotate your head a little bit to the right, the jugular vein on the left went from 19, which is four millimeters by five, to over 60, you know, like eight millimeters by eight. So that, so you and I talked about, if you wanna be preventative, you know, like you don't, you know, like you want, like we said, God might let you to live to be 102. So you don't wanna be at 95 where your memory, because mm -hmm. of the high brain pressure, maybe you start having memory problems. Well, anything else we should talk about? Well, some of those other, um, how about heart rate variability? Okay. And anybody who knows you would say, man, calmest guy, you know. Like when you're just sitting here, when we did the test, because you gotta realize you're in a medical office and da, da, your heart rate variability was 72 just sitting there, which is perfect. So it just means that you have the personality that is very calming, very self-controlled, so thus your heart rate variability is high meaning that you have a really strong vagal tone. And you know, many videos I've made is like, if you were gonna say, what's the number one test that everybody should know on themselves, it's heart rate variability, because that tells you whether you're sympathetic dominant or parasympathetic dominant, and you're parasympathetic dominant, which that means your vagus nerve can handle any kind of stressor. 
any kind of assault, any kind of yelling, any kind of, no, but you know, but that's great. There's a lot of that in life. Yeah. So the heart rate variability, that's the space between heartbeats? Yeah, space between heartbeats. Like how much variance there is between the heartbeats, you know, just as you're sitting there. Certainly good to have these tests and, and, and really know, you know, it's one thing to yeah. feel good and not have symptoms, but then having the tests confirm what you feel. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Or that would validate if you do have some problems. Yeah. So it's been great having you this week. Really appreciate oh. it and appreciate everything you do for Caring Medical. Well, it's great being here. It's been a wonderful journey and I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Awesome.